While in last month's annual letter to CEOs, BlackRock's Larry Fink spoke about the power of stakeholder capitalism, and we're seeing that in play right now. He said that in today's globally interconnected world, companies must create value for their shareholders, and one way of doing could be via tokenization. So why aren't more companies trying it? Well, who better to ask than a passionate advocate for tokenization? We are, of course, talking about Henry Chung, CEO of Fusang. And Fusang aims to reshape investment markets with blockchain technology. It's all about tokenization, isn't it, Henry? Absolutely. And to enable the capitalism. We're big fans of that here as well at Team Fusang. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, you're seeing the opportunity in the space and now increasingly folks like Larry Fink, institutional legacy folks, also seeing the opportunity. So let's talk about the potential here. What potential does tokenization offer to both companies and stakeholders? And why aren't we seeing more of it? You know, stakeholder capitalism has been topic du jour for a while now. At the World Economic Forum last year, it was the theme of the entire conference. And I think that more and more people, especially in these times that we're living in, are talking about stakeholder capitalism because we recognize that many of the communities in which we live, the companies that we work for, aren't necessarily always aligned with ourselves as individuals, as participants, stakeholders in these communities. But I think until today, it's been quite hard to actually execute on stakeholder capitalism. When you look at a large public company today, the sh set of shareholders and the set of consumers are often two very, very different groups of people. So no surprise, there isn't always alignment between them. But with tokenization, being able to open up the pool of all kinds of assets, including companies, to their own stakeholders, I think finally we can get closer to this ideal. And of course, trust. So what about trust? What do you think is needed to build confidence in the technology behind the types of tokens that can be issued, whether it's a utility or a security, for example? You know, we're, we're talking about those things so that people can feel really comfortable and happy to get on board because they trust it. Trust in technology is one thing, but I think probably even more important is that we need to start building trust in what I call the asset layer. People can and will look underneath the token and say, what exactly does this represent? And unfortunately, too often in the crypto space, when you dig that one layer deeper, it looks a little bit messy. It is not clear what exactly you're getting, what you're owning, if you're having any legal rights at all over an underlying asset. And I think if we can start to bring on the line better companies, better asset quality, where you have trust in the asset, trust in technology will naturally follow because people will then view technology as they should, just as the conduit to get access to these exciting investments. You know, to that point, Henry, you've said before that communities are key to all of this. So how do you create a community that can really help guarantee the success of a tokenization project and really share in that value, as you've said? By doing exactly what we've been talking about, by turning stakeholders into shareholders, and to me, the best way of actually building these communities and financially incentivizing them for being early adopters is to actually give them upside in the success of the platform itself. Uh, taking a page from you know, the ICO and crypto world in terms of actually delivering utility value to customers and having value capture on that side. But also, uh, as Fusang is doing with our own IPO, creating security tokens that represent shares so that people get both the equity and the utility upside. And, and also enabling companies to do things like launch grant pools, as we've begun to do, uh, creating pools not just of tokens, but actually of our own equity, and using that to incentivize investors and issuers. And when they come and add value, not only to Fusang as a centralized platform, but when they add value to each other, the network around us, dealing them in to owning part of our platform and the network itself. Henry Chong of Fusang, thanks so much for joining us today.